Well, Robbie, the New York Times now reports that the discovery of a text Tucker Carlson sent to producer back in 2021 initiated a chain of events that led to his ousting at the network last week. The text, sent one day after the Capitol attacks on January 6, reads, quote, A couple of weeks ago, I was watching video of people fighting in the street in Washington. A group of Trump guys surrounded an Antifa kid and started pounding the living shenanigans out of him. It was three against one, at least. Jumping a guy like that is dishonorable, obviously. It's not how white men fight. Yet suddenly I found myself rooting for the mob against the man, hoping they'd hit him harder, kill him. I really wanted them to hurt the kid. I could taste it. Then, somewhere deep in my brain, an alarm went off. This isn't good for me. I'm becoming something I don't want to be. The Antifa creep is a human being. As much as I despise what he says and does, much as I'm sure I'd hate him personally if I knew him, I shouldn't gloat over his suffering, I should be bothered by it. I should remember that somewhere somebody probably loves this kid and would be crushed if he was killed. If I don't care about those things, if I reduce people to their politics, how am I better than he is? This comes as Media Matters continues to leak more hot mic clips of Carlson on the Fox News set. Let's watch some of that, painful though it may be. If we're gonna talk about sex, I'd love to hit some of the fine points of technique. <laughs> but you know, but it's your show, it's totally up to you. We can certainly talk about your sexual technique, especially after your tanning testicles last week. <laughs> Not mine, I, we'll, we'll speak in more general terms, but I've got something to add. You wouldn't, okay, I'm not, you know what, I'm not qualified on that score, I will say. I thought his girlfriend was kinda yummy. Just kidding, just kidding, in case this is being pulled off the bird. Yeah, the bird. Hey, Media Matters for America, go yourself. That's the first thing I wanna say tonight. Second thing is, totally kidding, I don't even know what his girlfriend looks like. And if I did, I would not find her yummy. So if I'm understanding this correctly, he's actually anticipating there that this is eventually going to get leaked to Media Matters, um, which, which it thus did, by whom we don't know. Uh, look, okay, as far as the behind-the-scenes clips we're seeing... I have to say, I don't, I, like, I wouldn't even be showing them, except they're already in the news. I don't think trying to, like, embarrass people's off-camera moments is productive at all. I'm sure if you had a camera rolling here, like, all the time, um, and then you took things out of context, you'd be perfectly care, care, capable of embarrassing me, or maybe not you, because you've only been here three days, <laughs> Brianna, anyone else. Uh, so I don't really, like, put much stock in this at all, um, period. As for the text, uh, so people are really seizing on the, the part where he says, this is not how white men fight, which mm. sure is a very, um, I would say, racially problematic comment. Although overall, the tone of the message is one of someone realizing that he's going down a very bad pathway and then recognizing that he should pull himself back from it. So I'm not overall so understanding of why everyone's like, oh, wow, yeah, this is, of all the problems, this is the thing that, that would have gotten him out, but maybe I'm missing something. I feel like this humanizes Tucker in a way I, I never thought I'd see or say. Mm -hmm. Like, Tucker's showing remorse and saying that he recognizes he's going down a dark path. Uh, and feeling these things is something that he's critical of within himself. It sounds like it's keeping him up at night, the way he's changed, because I'm not sure, because of what he's covering on the network, because of the angle he's covering it from. Uh, to me, this is fascinating, but it's troubling that he admitted this is how he thinks, right? Am I surprised this is how he thinks? No. I am surprised he's remorseful about it. Does it make sense that, that he would be fired over a text like this? That's interesting to me. Right. So the New York Times obtained these messages. So, so obviously, I think, you know, the viewers know we've been covering this mm -hmm. um, for a long while. I mean, it's last week he got uh, ousted. We've been talking about it a lot. The timeline is, right, uh, the, the Dominion lawsuit happens, and then mm -hmm. in the discovery process, texts that were private messages between Tucker and a producer, um, are, because of the discovery process, get made not public to, uh, to the whole public, but the Fox News then sees messages they weren't going to see otherwise as a part of the lawsuit because they didn't settle quickly enough. And those messages 
including this one apparently, uh, distress the board enough that they're going to commission an independent investigation of Tucker. They've got this uh, sexual misconduct lawsuit coming in from a former producer. They've got the scandal, the Dominion matter overall, et cetera, et cetera, and so on and so forth. And they decide suddenly, abruptly, we're done, we're parting ways with him. So, mm -hmm. so apparently we're supposed to understand that texts, including texts we haven't seen yet, so spooked Fox leadership that that had to be it. And I, I, so this is one of those. Again, I don't really, yeah, it, this isn't a sentiment you should express it privately, publicly, or otherwise, but it's also a sentiment he's, he is like admitting is bad. So mm -hmm. it doesn't, to me, seem like the most horrible thing. Right, ever, but. yeah. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. It doesn't seem like the most horrible thing. It's interesting that the messaging out of Fox is not like, we can't believe he said this. How could someone say something like this or believe these things? Well, We're I disgusted think Fox by is it. To bury him, right? They're, they're, I don't, I, 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 people at Fox leaking <laughs> these things. They're right. They're they're trying right. to. Yeah. To, uh, I mean, they parted ways. They they you know they don't want to him. I mean, I don't I don't know. I have no idea. But a former employer doesn't necessarily want you to look good after they've kicked you to the curb. Right. And it seems that a part of the reason they kicked him to the curb is because partially. They're saying they were worried that these would leak, right? right? So it's not that they condemn them. It's we're worried that the public would condemn them, and then we'd have to deal with this whole media circus, which, to me, understanding Rupert Murdoch's position and the kind of lawsuits he's been in before mm -hmm. is perhaps avoiding a repeat of history of, of the case in London. Hmm. Well, in a new CNN interview, Abby Grossberg, who is the former Fox News producer I mentioned, who is suing Fox News for sexual discrimination, so she claimed that Tucker Carlson played a role in brokering this year's speakership showdown in the House. Let's watch. His plan was to have Kevin McCarthy come on the show, according to um, Justin Wells revealed this grand plan to us. Tucker, a few days earlier, had sort of set some terms for McCarthy, which included this church kind of committee that he said about, I think it, this was about January 5th, so about January 2nd, mm -hmm. he said, you should have this church committee. So fast forward to January 5th, they start asking me to book McCarthy on the show that night. I had worked with him a lot when I was at Sunday Morning Futures and had a relationship with his team. Um, that afternoon, Justin came in and he said, here's the plan. Tucker's gonna first have Kevin on, hear him beg and grovel, then we'll bring in Matt Gates, and Matt Gates will then kind of set his terms. Then Tucker will set his terms that McCarthy has to agree to. Tucker Carlson had terms that had McCarthy terms, had yeah, to had terms. Yeah, had terms. And we're going to make this whole thing happen on air and save the Republican Party. Now, fortunately, for McCarthy's sake, he said no. But he did call Tucker the next day from his office with Representative Thomas Massey and had agreed to some of Tucker's terms, according to a text that Tucker had sent me. And he said that was a win. Hmm. Yeah, there. Uh, so I, I caught this interview on CNN last night, and I thought that was particularly interesting because both um, uh, uh, Anderson Cooper and Abby Grossberg very much see, are seeming to suggest to my mind that that was really improper. Um, but like, I mean, T Tucker's an opinion host. He's, 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 an ad, ad, he's a media entertainer and advocate. Um, absolutely, he is, like, it's not, it's not dishonest or behind, like, he is trying to exercise and has, in fact, exercised influence over the Republican Party as many conservative media figures aim to do. So they're all, like, they're trying to suggest that there was something not legitimate about that, I, which I don't, like, yeah, it's a testament to how powerful and influential that show was, that he could even conceivably uh, place pressure on the would-be Speaker of the House to reflect the agenda that Tucker thinks is good. But like, again, and again, some of that agenda would have been, principally, it was, it was about, all about foreign policy. They were trying to get a commitment to, to have a vote on, on, or have no more Ukraine spending. So, like, that's the influence he was trying to exercise there, which I, that is, I mean, I mean what, what do you want me to say? That's a position I agree with. So, I, I, am I supposed to be, like, upset that he was trying to exercise influence over a political figure in the direction of policy I agree with? Right. As a news network, like, Fox, CNN, yeah. any of mainstream media that will run programming and advertisements from large corporations and then never criticize money in politics. And even local news stations rely so heavily on local elections purchasing advertising on their network. It funds local news stations. So there's so much resistance to talk about money in politics and influence. 
Let's talk about Tucker Carlson's actual influence in American politics. It's there. To pretend that the media does not influence politics in America is ridiculous. There's no point in doing CNN's that. CNN's jealous They're, because they don't, perhaps, they don't exercise Robbie. any influence. Yeah, and, and I think that's really at the heart of this is you can say, oh, God, how could Tucker possibly have demands for the leaders of the Republican Party when members of Congress are bought and sold to say things all of the time? At least Tucker Carlson has an audience of viewers, which mm -hmm. are the American people. Like, he has a constituent constituency to some degree. Do corporations? No, they have many dollars, but they don't have a ton of people that are like, please lobby Congress to repeal these regulations so that, you know, we have trains crash in our town and spew dangerous chemicals. Like, that's really not how it, how it works. Tucker Carlson actually has a right. base of people who believe in what he says. I mean, if, if you think what he was trying to get them to do, uh, the, the policies he wanted McCarthy to commit to are bad, just say, his influence is bad because he's trying to get policies I don't agree with. But again, he was right. principally trying to influence at that moment. And again, I don't co-sign everything he's ever said at, by any stretch of the imagination. I don't agree with all of his policies. In fact, some of his the pressure he's exerted on the Republican Party is to move it away from policies I support. But that is not true on foreign policy. On foreign policy, he has pushed. He's been part of a trend um, uh, in conservative media. Uh, he's been at the forefront of moving in a less interventionist direction. Uh, now the Republican Party is much more oriented around the kind of, uh, of dovishness that would have been, that was popular on the left and in the Democratic Party in the aughts. Uh, he was part of that. That's what he was trying to get McCarthy to commit to. So, again, if they don't agree with it, and I, I, I don't think CNN does, right? They, they have very, um, uh, uh, the war, you know, we must do everything we can to help the Ukrainian side of the war is a, is a lot of their coverage. So you can just say that was wrong because that policy is bad, but that, that's not what they said. Right, they won't precisely. Admit it. Yeah, and like I can't. I do. I agree with Tucker. Do I want the U.S. government to do everything that Tucker Carlson says? No. Are there things that I would like to communicate and have those ideas spread and have that influence what happens in Washington? Yeah, absolutely. I think there are a lot of people who care deeply about what's going on in politics and policy mm -hmm. that feel that way. CNN also runs programming all the time on Ukraine. Uh, they have an influence over what the public thinks about Ukraine and perhaps what they tell the representatives they want them to do on Ukraine, right? And that could be sort of reverse causality, right? Are they making people feel for Ukraine when they show the rubble and talk to families about how terrible it's been? That influences people deeply. That influences Washington. And to pretend that just because Tucker said the quiet part out loud, that that's suddenly a problem when they do it all the time, I don't know. Hmm. I don't agree with it. Well, we will continue to cover this story, of course, and we'll have more rising right after this.